Hi everyone. Are you having a good time so far? I love this conference. We need more CSS conferences, I think. So I guess before I start, I should introduce myself as well. That's the polite thing to do. I'm Leah. Uh, I work at W3C in the developer relations team. And if you've ever heard my name before, it's probably from one of my open source projects. Uh, the most popular of which are Prism. That's a syntax highlighter that's used in um, Smashing Magazine, Alista Port, webplatform.org, and recently in MDN. Uh, or you might have heard it from me from Dablet or, Prefi or Prefix Free or one of, my open, uh, one of my other open source projects. You can find a list on GitHub. So, when I started designing this talk, I had this weird idea. I have many weird ideas. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. So I had this weird idea that I wanted to create a creature that personifies border radius. And I thought, how would border radius look if it was a creature? And I kind of imagined it as that, that kind of character in children's books that's uncool and boring and nobody, nobody is their friend and nobody cares about him and he ends up saving the day and proving that he's much cooler than we thought. <laughs> so that's border radius. And when most of us meet border radius, it looks like this. There is a single value and if you increase it, the rounding increases and that value stands for the rounding of a circle in the, in the corners, the radius of that circle. And it has great browser support. We don't even need prefixes anymore. We never needed prefixes for Opera or IE. It's supported by pretty much every modern browser. And there's nothing else to know about border radius, right? So bye-bye. Let's go to the after party. Wait a second. If that's, all what, if that's what border radius is all about, why do we need six pages in the specification to define it, let alone the content in other properties that, that defines how they interact with border radius? You didn't think that was really over, right? I was just messing with you. So the first thing that we usually learn after uh, the basic usage of border radius is that we can have a different radius per corner. So if we specify two lengths, each of them, uh, the first one corresponds to the top left corner the sec uh, and the bottom right corner, and the second one corresponds to the top right corner and the bottom left one, and we can provide four le uh, three lengths, uh, the third one corresponds to the bottom right corner, or we can provide four lengths. And uh, that's the shorthand, it also corresponds to uh, four, uh, four long hands, like border top left radius. So, for instance, instead of doing something like this, which would require us to repeat the same value three times, we could instead do this. Border bottom right radius, zero, which produces the same result with more dry code. Don't repeat yourself. So, to summarize, if we have two values, each of those stands for two declarations, for two longhand declarations. If we have three values, the first one and the, and the third one stands for the top left and bottom right corner, uh, and the second one stands for both the, the top right and the bottom left corner. And if we have four values, four lengths, each of those sets uh, a separate corner. And here's when things start looking interesting. Here I've set a border radius that's 900 pixels for the top left corner and 90 pixels for all the other corners. So I'm going to change the first value and make it 2,900 pixels. Do you notice what happened here? I'm only changing the top left corner, but all of them change. You can probably see it more in the, in the top corners because the contrast is really off in that projector. But you can see that even though I'm only tweaking one, all of them change. And why is that? The, the dimensions of our element here are 500 pic 540 pixels by four, 420 pixels. So we don't have enough space for 900 pixels of border radius let alone 990, which is the sum of both hor the horizontal ones. There's just not enough space for this. So what has the CSS working group decided to do in those cases? If the border radius doesn't fit, 
all of them are scaled down by the same amount. In the wording of the spec, when the sum of any two adjacent border radii exceeds the size of the border box, UAs must proportionally reduce the used values of all border radii until none of them overlap. If that sounds difficult to understand, just remember what, what I said. If, if your specified border radius does not, fit, does not fit in the box of your element, they're all scaled down by the same amount. If you prefer maths, this is how it looks. <laughs> and by the way, I've used MathML for this equation. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it allows you to do uh, um, math equations directly in the browser, and you can provide CSS fallbacks. OK, back to border radius. So as a recap, what we just learned, we can have different radii per corner. Both radii and radiuses are correct, regardless of what Tabai Aitkins might say. Uh, separate uh, properties for every corner are available, like border top right radius, which are useful if you only want to change one of them, or if you, uh, or if you only want to set one and you don't want to repeat the value. And if the sum of any two adjacent radiuses exceeds the length of their side, they're reduced proportionally, all four of them. Here's a, very, here's a pretty cool demo that shows the possibilities with just this little bit of knowledge. Uh, every tile you click adjusts the border radius accordingly. So, yeah. Um, um, <laughs> OK, so you can create many interesting shapes. Um, so here we try to apply what we've learned so far to create an ellipse. We have a border radius of 210 pixels. You can see the dimensions here. It's the same dimensions as I've mentioned before. And if I show you the structure of uh, if I, you can see that this, the, the circle, you can see that it's just a circle, it's not an ellipse. And I can't really do much more than that with one value. You can see that I can make it smaller, and I just have a rounded rectangle, and I, I can't really make it bigger than uh, 210 pixels. So, how can I create an ellipse? With everything I've discussed so far, we can't but there's more to it. So we can use a slash to separate a different horizontal and vertical radius. So this is equivalent to the declaration we had before, and it specifies that we want the radius of the circle in every corner to have a horizontal radius of 210 pixels and a vertical one of 210 pixels, which is a circle. But now we can adjust each of them separately. Let's see how that, how that works. We can increase them. Now we have an ellipse uh, on every corner, which, is, which has a radius of 250 pixels horizontally and 210 <laughs> vertically. And if we keep increasing the radius, it now matches our entire element, and we have an ellipse, which is exactly what we were trying to do. But that's far from ideal, because it, it has a pretty serious problem. If I increase the width, We still have the same ellipse on the corners, which did help us to create an, uh, to, to, to turn our element into an ellipse when its, uh, its dimensions were 540 pixels by 420. But it doesn't help when, when our dimensions are different, bigger or smaller. You can see what happens when the dimensions are smaller as well. So. We could, prob we, could, we could adjust the dimensions, uh, we could adjust the border radius. And for instance, in this case, we could turn this into half of our width, 350. And it will work. We have an ellipse again. But then if, if our width changes again, you can see that it breaks. It's like a weird cylinder-like shape. What? So is that how we want to be spending our time, changing values to correspond with other values? Is there, isn't there anything better? Well, we could use variables, like tab described earlier, but 
it's going to be a long time before we, got, we get those. In this case, however, there's a better solution. We can use percentages. 50% horizontally means half of the width, and 50% vertically means half the height. And that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted a radius that's half our dimensions. And since, since we have the same percentage, both horizontally and vertically, we can even eliminate the slash and just has, have one value. And you can see that no matter how I, I adjust the dimensions now, we, we have an ellipse in every case. So now that we saw how we can make an ellipse, are there any other interesting shapes we can make with this? Can we make half an ellipse? We can. We can use 50% radius horizontally if we want half an ellipse. If, if we cut an ellipse uh, during, uh, across the, uh, the horizontal diameter and we get like this kind of shape, we can use 50% uh, radius horizontally and vertically 100% for the top corners and zero for the bottom corners and we get an ellipse half an ellipse. And if the dimensions we specify are, if the width is half the height, for instance, if we have 300 here and 600 here, that's not just half an ellipse, but also half a circle. It's a semicircle. So now that we saw how we can make half an ellipse, what else can we make? Can we make a quarter ellipse? Let's try doing that. What is a quarter ellipse? It has a radius both horizontally and vertically that's 100% for the top left corner and zero for the others. So it will look like this. We don't need a different horizontal and vertical radius in this case. It's 100% it's for the top left corner, both horizontally and vertically, and zero for the others. So there we have it, a quarter ellipse. And if we adjust those, if we adjust the width to be equal to the height, we have a, semi -cir a, a quarter circle. So now that we made a quarter circle, can we make one eighth of a circle? No, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the future. Uh, so what else can we make? We could make an egg. So for instance, if we want to make an egg, what is an egg? Like, the, the horizontal radius is 50% horizontally because it's symmetrical uh, across the, ver uh, the, the vertical diameter. And it will have a larger radius in the, top, in the, in the two top corners and a slightly smaller one in uh, the bottom corners. But they should both add up to 100% because we don't have, want to have any straight lines in our, in our egg. So let's try doing that. Now we have an ellipse, and let's try 60% and 40%. So 60% for the top corners, and 40% for the bottom corners. And obviously an egg doesn't have these kinds of proportions, so we should reduce the width, and maybe increase the height a bit. And it's starting to look like an egg, right? We could slightly adjust the shape of the egg if we make these uh, 70 and 30, but I think 60 and 40 worked better. So there you have it. You can even make eggs with water radius. As a summary, um, you can have up to four values uh, in, on every side of the slash. You don't need to have the same number of values before or after the slash, as I, showed you, as I showed you before. You can have like one value before the slash and four afterwards or whatever. They're expanded individually. And another thing to note is that if, if either of the two radii, either the horizontal or the vertical one is zero, they're both drawn as zero. However, it doesn't mean that, that, the, second, that the other radius that's not zero is exactly equivalent. For instance, if we want to make a semicircle, we, uh, if we want to make a quarter circle, we might try something like this at first. But as you can see, that doesn't work. Let me make the, 
the dimensions equal so you can see it more clearly. And this doesn't work. It's not the same as if we had this, which does produce a semicircle. The reason, the reason of that is that since we have 100% horizontally, it's considered, it's expanded as this, 100% for every corner, and since 200% does not fit in the box, it's shrunk to 50%, which means every radius is multiplied by, by 0.5, including the vertical ones, because we want the proportions to remain the same. So you get a, a completely different result. So as a recap, what we just learned in this section, we can have different horizontal and vertical radii. Percentages refer to the corresponding dimension, either width or height, the width horizontally, the height vertically. Border radius can take up to eight lengths, although I've never really needed to use eight. Uh, and when either the vertical or the horizontal radius is zero, there will be no rounding. So I have a few examples here that, that demonstrate that all this complexity is not actually, it's actually useful, it's not intellectual masturbation of the working group. <laughs> For instance, uh, here Simurai, who is awesome in creating CSS stuff, uh, this is a pretty old demo that he made. Uh, it's a few buttons that use pretty much everything I've showed so far. Elliptical curves, different radiuses per corners, uh, 50%, border radius 50%, like everything I've showed so far, he's using it in a very nice way. Here's something that's not as useful, but I think it's kind of fun and it also demonstrates what you can do with border radius. And here's an actual example I've done. I've used border radii with uh, percentages, different percentages on every corner here to create these irregular shapes that look like pebbles, both in the languages and in the button here, and in here, but that doesn't look very nice. And these are just elements with border radius and a background image for the texture. The shadows and the shape and everything is just CSS. How many of you have wondered why the name of the property is border radius and not corner radius or something else that makes more sense? You don't really need borders for it to work, right? So why is it named border radius? How many of you wondered about that at some point? Quite a lot. Me too. So there is a reason it was called border radius, and I'm about to explain it. Although I think pretty much everyone in the CSS working group agrees that it was a bad idea by now. It should be corner radius or something like that. The reasoning behind it is that even though it doesn't make any difference when you don't have borders, when you do have borders, border radius rounds the border box, which is the outer, curve, uh, which is the outer uh, radius. So in this case, that I have a 20% border, we get 40% uh, rounding for the border box, and the inner radius is 20%, which is our border radius, 40, minus 20, that's our border width. So as I adjust the border width, the inner radius shrinks and shrinks until it, it becomes zero. It can't get negative, obviously. However, the outer one is always 40, because that's exactly what border radius specifies. In the wording of the spec, the padding edge inner border radius is the outer border radius minus the corresponding border thickness. In the case where this results in a negative value, the inner radius is zero. And if maths is more understandable than the spec, this is how it looks. It's the maximum of zero and the outer radius minus the border width, because obviously it can't be negative. This applies to, a, to different border widths as well. So here, you have an outer border radius that's 40, but the inner radius is, a, is elliptical because you have different border widths. So vertically, it's 40 minus 10 because your top border is 10. Horizontally, it's 40 minus 20 because your, your border right is 20 pixels. So what if you don't want an elliptical cur curve in your inner uh, radius? What can you do to avoid this?
you can override border radius for that specific corner, border top right radius. Initially, it's 40 pixels. But you can specify a horizontal radius that's larger by 10 pixels to balance out the difference of the border width. So let's see how that will look. So here you so now you have an inner radius that's, uh, that's not elliptical, it's a circle. But obviously, you can't have everything. The outer one is elliptical, which is what we specified, basically. Horizontally, 50 pixels, vertically, 40 pixels. And this is how it looks. Whether this looks better or worse than before is your call, but at least now you know how to do it. So we've discussed what happens when you have uh, different border thicknesses. What happens if you have different border colors? Let's see how it looks. Uh, let's assume we wanted a, th uh, a darker shadow at the, uh, a darker border that looks like a shadow at the uh, right edge. So we would say border right color black. And you get this. As you can see, the, the, there's no transition between the different colors. It's just an abrupt line. And that line has a specific angle. In most browsers, actually in every browser I've tested, that angle just depends on the border thicknesses. You can see how it changes as I change the border thickness. It doesn't depend on the border radius. Regardless of what border radius I specify, the angle stays the same. There was a lot of discussion in the CSS working group at some, at some point about this. And what the spec currently says is the spec defines an area where the transition could be inside. And anything that falls within that area is conformant. It's, it's not violating the spec. It could be a gradient between the two colors, or it could be an abrupt line like this. As long as it stays within that area, it's OK. So that's what most browsers decided to do. It's basically the same thing that they do if you don't have a border radius. So even though that might not be ideal for many cases, it can be kind of fun, too. Let's see how it could be fun. So if we say width and height of zero, and we increase the border width, and let's change the color here. And you could even specify loads of different colors here, like whatever. I think it's kind of interesting, although I'm not sure how useful. So what we just learned, border radius rounds the outer border edge. The inner one will be smaller. How smaller? As small as the border width. Even with a circular radius, the inner radius might be elliptical, if different border widths are involved, you can change that by overriding the border radius uh, and making it elliptical for that corner. And if the borders have different colors, the transition will be abrupt and diagonal, and the angle will not depend on the, the border radius. <coughs> so we've seen the combination of border radius and borders. What happens when we combine border radius with other properties, like shadows, for instance? Here we have a pretty typical shadow. It's 10 pixels uh, offset, by both horizontally and vertically, and it has a 10 pixels blur. I'm going to remove the blur to make the radius more clear. And you can see that the box shadow has an exactly equal radius as our element. If I remove the vertical offset, it will, be even, it will become even more clear. You can see the rounding is exactly the same. I can, if I provide a spread radius, it will increase the rounding of the box shadow, similarly to how um, borders have a different inner and outer radius. 
So you can see how if I provide a spread radius, it has a, 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 a much it, it has a bigger rounding, and the radius is as it's bigger by 70 pixels, which is our spread value. So the radius of this one, of this edge, is 20 plus 70, 90 pixels. And if I have a negative radius, it, it goes the other way. It reduces the border radius we specified up to zero. You can see it more clearly if I move the shadow a bit. So, box shadow plays well with border radius, they're friends. What happens with outline? Outline doesn't like border radius very much. No matter what radius we specify, outline won't do it. Why do we still have a shadow? That's a bug. Hmm. Okay. Script bug. Um, okay, so as you can see, the outline does not follow the rounding. Firefox does have a proprietary property, outline radius, Moz outline radius, where you can specify the rounding separately. And you, sh you, can, you should tweak it a bit as well, because as you can see, it doesn't exactly match, because you need to add the, the outline thickness to it. It's horrible, and it only works in Firefox. So is there anything better we could do? Yeah, there is. And instead of using an outline, we can use a shadow instead that has the same effect. Zero offsets, zero blur, a positive spread to make it larger, and whatever color we like. It has exactly the same effect. It has the thickness we want. It's, it, it, it looks like an outline, like a rounded outline. It doesn't affect layout, just like outlines. So for, this, for, for cases like these, it's not, obviously it's not 100% the same in every case. But for cases like this, it's fine. It works the same. Uh, and we could even have a shadow as well. We can comma separate shadows and, have like, and do like, something like this. And you can see both of them. So what we just learned. <coughs> Box shadow follows the curves of border radius. Spread adds to the border radius, which means that if it's negative, it subtracts for the, from the border radius, because that's how adding negative values works. Outline is always rectangular, but you don't need to use outlines for this sort of effect. You can emulate them with box shadow. And here's what happens when you have a border radius and text. Unfortunately, the text doesn't follow the border radius. It's always a square. And the, the bigger our border radius, the worse it looks. We, there are a few things we could do. None of them is ideal. We could specify overflow hidden. Yeah, not exactly what we would want in most cases. We could specify some padding, and that's what most people end up doing. So, as you can see, it increases the dimensions we have, but we can always say box sizing border box and keep them the same. And if we specify a large enough padding, it will work. We, we get lots of wasted space here and here, but at least it doesn't... It, it doesn't go outside our element, except the bottom, because I've set the specific height. If I specify height auto, that, that won't happen anymore. Or you could do overflow y auto. So you can see what happens here. The spec says that browsers can reduce the border radius pretty much as they wish to accommodate scroll bars, and Firefox chooses to do this. No rounding for you here. Chrome doesn't do this. Uh, I'm just using Firefox for these slides. But I'm going to switch to Chrome right now to show you what we'll be able to do in the near future instead of the padding hack or, you, or cutting off our text with overflow. So there is a spec called CSS shapes. And Chrome does support a bit of it if you turn on a flag. It's kind of awkward for this purpose. It feels like a hack but it works. 
So you use the property shape inside to define what shape your text will use to, round, to, to flow inside. And we're going to use a rounded rectangle. So a rectangle starts at 0, 0. It has 100% of our dimensions. And the last two parameters are the rounding. For some reason, you cannot specify just one rounding. It doesn't work. You need to specify both of them, 50 and 50. And now it works. You can see it here. It does round. Um, will it fit in one line? Nope. So you can see that it does round according to our box. Oh, there's why it doesn't fit. I'm not full screen. And if I increase the rounding here, it doesn't automatically get it. I have to redefine it here. That's why I said it's not perfect. And if I have padding, like, I don't know, 20 pixels, you can see the, the, that I will need to adjust the rounding according to the padding. Because the, the inner rounding will be smaller by 20 pixels in this case. So everything needs to be done manually. I basically need to re-specify my entire shape with that syntax. Not to mention that Chrome right now has a few issues, a few bugs. Like if I, if I want to specify box sizing, border box, to avoid having my box um, grow according to the padding, it turns it into a rectangle again. I don't know why. So what we just learned, border radius does not affect text wrapping. It's, text is always wrapped in a rectangle unless you specify otherwise. Overflow hidden follows the rounding, but clips text, so it's not of much use. Padding can help us. And CSS, CSS shapes will solve this, but radius needs to be duplicated in them and sometimes recalculated when you have uh, borders or paddings or that kind of thing. Here is something that most of us know intuitively if, if somebody asks us. If somebody asks you, is, is border radius animatable? Can we use transitions and animations and border radius? You'll probably think about it for a few seconds and you'll say, yeah, why not? It just accepts lengths and percentages. Both of those are animatable. So yeah, it is animatable, even though you don't often see animations about it. In this case, it has a rounding of 20 pixels, and when I hover, it goes up to 200 pixels. Or you could do other interesting stuff, like this. <laughs> it's like it's dancing. <laughs> or, you could, do even, you could do animations instead of transitions. So let's make a silly animation. To, let's make it, I wanna have something like a semi, like half an ellipse for the initial state. And when the animation plays, I want the border radius to become an ellipse. So let's turn this into an animation that repeats infinitely and alternates so that it, does, it doesn't jump from the last keyframe to the first one. So you can see how that looks. And you can make it even funnier by using something like this. <laughs> I think that's awesome. <laughs> like, I came up with this animation if, like an hour ago, and I was like staring at my screen, I was like, this is so funny. <laughs> I wish I could draw a shadow as well underneath, it would be so much more realistic. And you probably can with pseudo elements, but I'm not gonna do this on stage. So there are many interesting animations you could do with border radius, and if you come up with something nice that you can do with just border radius and not other properties, you should add it here, you should send a pull request. It's a gallery of different animations you can do with a single property. It's on my GitHub. 
So what we just learned, border radius is animatable. Yay! We can animate between any two radii, because they're all they all compute to the same thing, basically. Even, even if we just specify one value, it always computes to four values horizontally and four values vertically. Border radius affects the hit testing area. I didn't show you that. Um, if you hover where, outside the rounding, it, it, the hover class, the hover pseudo class will not be triggered. So these days, border radius is for the most part interoperable across browsers. Uh, it works pretty much in the same way when you use it in uh, CSS. However, that doesn't mean it's fully interoperable. There are still some incompatibilities. And those incompatibilities can be found when you're using scripting, when you're using get computed style to get the computed style of border radius. In the basic case, you'll just get the same value in every browser. If you specify border radius 10 pixels, you'll just get 10 pixels. But here I've specified a border radius, different for, for every corner, that has both percentages, M's, and is scaled down because it doesn't fit. Like, I can't have 100% plus anything. It will be scaled down. It doesn't fit. So what happens when I try to query the computed style? I'm saving, it, I'm saving a, an, an element, uh, a reference to my element in this variable, Mr. BR, and I'm getting the computed style of the top left radius. What do you expect to happen? What do you expect the computed style to be for the top left radius, which is 100%? How many think it's going to be 100%? How many think it's going to be pixels, whatever they resolve to? Mm, some of you think it's not, it's not going to be either, because there are people that didn't raise hand in either of the answers. I'm, I'd be really curious what you think it would be. <laughs> so, more of you said that it's going to be pixels. Fewer of you think it's going to be 100%. Wrong. It is 100% in almost every browser, except Firefox. I think what Firefox is doing is much more convenient, and that's why I'm using Firefox for these slides, because I, I need to display what border radius computes to, and I couldn't do that easily, as easily in Chrome. So also, if we get the, the computed style of the border top right radius, which is the 2M, what will browsers report? Remember, we did specify 2M, but the M's are... For the browser to draw the rounding, the M's need to be turned into pixels, and because we have 100% on the other side, uh, it will be scaled down. So how many of you think that it will, the browser will report 2M? How many of you think it's going to turn the M's into pixels, but it will report it won't report scaled down sizes, just whatever the, the M's resolve to. Like if, the, if you have a, a font size of 16 pixels, it will report th 32 pixels. And how many think it will report the scaled down value, the, the actual value that it uses? So, most browsers will turn the M's into pixels, but that's all they will, they will do. In, here, in this case, we had a font size of 40 pixels, so they report 80 pixels. Firefox will report the actual used value, which is very convenient, but it's actually not the computed value that it reports, it's the used value. So it's not quite correct, even though it's convenient. And that's why we should have a, a DOM function that returns the actual used value, but that's another discussion. So what we just learned, there are incompatibilities in get computed style and border radius. Firefox converts percentages to pixels, all other browsers report percentages, and Firefox reports scale down sizes if the, the radius is scaled down, and all other browsers report specified sizes. So, we've seen what border radius can do today. Will border radius will be able to do more things in the future? Well, nothing is for sure right now, because the next iteration of uh, backgrounds and borders is still in editor's draft, and anything can change in an editor's draft. It's still basically a collection of ideas, but Fantasy from the CSS Working Group had an amazing idea, and that idea is called border corner shape, which will use uh, 
the border radius to create many interesting shapes. You can see them here. This is an app I, I built to simulate what's going to happen. And I think bevel is the most interesting value. You could use it for all sorts of things, not just to create cut-off corners like this. For instance, to create a rhombus, 50%, and that's it. So that's a diamond. Or a hexagon. Or a triangle. Or if you don't want a symmetrical triangle, you could specify different values here, like, I don't know, um, 30 and 70. And it's so easy, it's just one line of CSS. Or if you want to create a trapezoid, just that. Uh, or if you want to create an arrow for breadcrumbs, zero, um, 50%, 50% zero. Just that. I think it's awesome. It's still a bit awkward, like border corner shape is not a, a perfect name, but uh, it's, it will be so powerful if it, if it makes it. Until then, however, because that, that will take at least a year, and a year would be incredibly optimistic. I think it would... In the, in the most optimistic scenario, it will take a year to start seeing a first experimental implementation. And that's, that's incredibly optimistic. So what can we do until then? We can use gradients. In this case, I've used four gradients. Each of them occupy a quarter of the element. If I change the color here, you can see more clearly what's happening. So each of them uh, occupies a quarter. That's why they have background, background size of 50%. 50% horizontally, 50% vertically, different positions. And the color stops are exactly at the same position. It's zero here, but that's, exact, that's equivalent to 20 pixels. It's just zero so that I can change this, and I don't have to change it twice. So you can see how I can just tweak the size of one corner very easily. It's, it's not perfect, like it's very difficult to do with um, a background that's not solid, but it is something. And you can do something similar with radial gradients as well. I can change the size here as easily. It doesn't, obviously, as you can see, it doesn't affect the text wrapping, but then again, neither does border radius. So as I'm nearing to the end of this talk, uh, I know many of you might soon feel that you just forgot everything, especially after the beers you'll drink at the after party. So here are a few links that will help you. Uh, the first two are from worldplatform.org. How many of you have heard about this? Almost half, that's great. So webplatform.org is uh, an effort by W3C to document the web. Uh, to create like the best documentation there is and it's working together with uh, all the, the big companies of the web like Google, Microsoft, Mozilla, pretty much all the big ones and it's, it's a wiki so I know it's not perfect yet because it launched in October so it's still at very early stage, it's still in alpha but each one of you can help it become better and I have stickers with me so if you want to come afterwards and ask me for one I have plenty so don't be too shy to ask. And this is the, the link to the CSS Backgrounds and Borders 3 spec. I'm not giving you a link to the level 4 spec because it's still very, very early. And before we go into q and I want to answer a question that I always get asked. So I'm going to answer in advance and save you time. Uh, many people ask me how I made my slides. Uh, the slide deck was built with open web technologies, everything is just HTML, uh, CSS and JavaScript, and SVG and MathML. Uh, the slideshow framework is something I made two years ago and I keep improving it since, it's on GitHub. The illustrations are built with SVG, like the grass here, and the sky, and Mr. Border Radius's face. Uh, I, I drew all of that in SVG. Uh, the Mr. Border Radius's face is animated with smile. I'm not sure, if, if you weren't, if you were too, if you found the code too boring and you were staring at the face, you might have noticed that it does do some animations like move its eyebrows or eyes, and that's, that's smile. And the equations displayed, the two of them, uh, I didn't show many equations, they were, built, they were built with MathML. And I just clicked to a link accidentally. Yeah, 
and I don't have the buttons to go back. Brilliant. Back. Um, back where? Yeah, it doesn't work. The keyword, the, 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 the keyword shortcut doesn't work, so I need to show the... Oh, history, right, of course, back. Hmm. Um, okay, so let's go to the questions, and thank you. Here are my slides. If you, so if you, if you kept notes throughout, that, that wasn't a good idea, because <laughs> my slides are online. I guess I should have said that earlier. <laughs> oh, well. Thank you. Any questions? Do we have time for questions? Yeah. Yep, we do. Actually, I'm not sure we do. We have a minute. Any questions? They don't have to be about border radius. Like, <laughs> if you want to ask something about W3C or the CSS Working Group or whatever, I mean, Tab is obviously the better person to ask, but I, I can answer a few. I know Tab knows everything, but maybe I could help too. Okay. All right, you can always find me at the after party. I'm not sure what the, of the quality of my questions after the beers, but I'll be there. <laughs>